Hello, one and all, and welcome to Let's Play Persona Q, Shadow of the Labyrinth. I am the Max Few Trades, and guess what? <laughs> oh, oh man, it's a twofer. First and foremost, now that I finally played through Persona 3, I can play spin-off games, and nothing gets spoiled for me. It's awesome. So, yeah, that's going to be pretty great. Also, I somehow got this game to run. <laughs> um... As you may or may not be aware, 3DS games, not exactly the easiest thing in the world for someone of my uh, current setup to really get to work, but I found a way. I'm going to warn you ahead of time, every now and then there may be a little bit of a slowdown. Just a bit, just a bit, and in places. It, it, I, I did some testing with different games, and it's... Uh, it, it, it's, it, doesn't, it never gets that bad, and, and if it does, it never gets that bad for that long. But I digress, I digress. Uh, this is a Persona 4 and 3 crossover game where apparently they come together and save the world somehow, I imagine. And I've been super looking forward to it for a very, very, very long time. So here's hoping that y'all enjoy this crazy little adventure. Uh, in a maze of life, as it were. Welcome to the world of Persona Q. It is up to you to choose the protagonist of this story. Your choice of protagonist will affect how the story develops. Okay, so, initially, I was originally going to do this kind of overly exaggerated sort of joke-esque intro where I was like, Oh no, how could I ever possibly decide as I was making my obvious decision and doing and just kind of playing it up like, because obviously, I think everybody knows what I'm going to pick. But, I came to the conclusion that that's kind of disrespectful, honestly, and I didn't want to come off that way. Persona 3 is a really, really freaking good game. I enjoyed it greatly. The Persona 3 protagonist, a second year at Gekokan High School and the leader of Seas. He is investigating Tartarus to save mankind from the Apathy Syndrome. A noble quest if there ever what was one. However, that being said, as great as Persona 3 was, personally, for me, the story and characters of Persona 4 resonated much more strongly with me. While I would easily play either game at any moment in time, and while I'll probably at some point play through this game again as the Persona 3 protagonist, for this channel, for this Let's Play, for me right here, right now, experiencing this game for the first time, trying to make a decision, I gotta go with Persona 4. A second year student at Yasugami High School and leader of the investigation team, working to solve the murders in the rural town of Yasuniba. Uh, Yaso Inaba. Hmm, <laughs> let's say the name correctly. How about we do that? Haha. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what we're gonna go with. Plus, I mean, it hasn't been that long since I last saw the Persona 3 cast. It's been, uh, okay, I guess maybe almost a year, but still, that's longer than it's been for Persona 4. So, that's my justification. The story will be centered around the companions of Persona 4. I'm okay with this. Also, side note, the art style for this game is absurdly cute. Oh my god! Enter the protagonist's name. Now, I could go with the canonical name for the character now that I'm aware of it. But again, for this channel, for the sake of just, you know, doing things the way that I feel is most appropriate, 
I'm gonna go with the names that I gave these characters. I, I'm not sure if I even get to name the Persona 3 protagonist because of this, but if I do, I'm naming the characters the way I named them in the games for consistency. That's what I want to do. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, use the keyboard. I can do that. So it's time for the continuing adventures of Kai. I'm realizing I probably don't have enough letters. Uh-oh. Uh, how far can we get? Open. Ah, duh. All right, so I have to get rid of a single letter. Okay. Uh, then we're going to have to compromise. And I feel like the odd, the ah and the ada at the end are the most important part. So let's say Kai Opada. I mean, I, it's still missing the end. That's unfortunate, but uh, it's okay. I'm not going to have to be saying it too terribly often. We, we're working with what we got. This name is acceptable. I accept it enthusiastically. Next, select the game's difficulty. This selection has no effect on the story, so choose a difficulty that suits your playstyle. You can change the difficulty later on while playing as well. But if you select Risky, you will not allowed, be allowed to change it later. Gotcha. So safety is... <laughs> no, no, I won't. But I do want to read these. Recommended for those wishing to enjoy the story. Even easier than easy. You can immediately continue if your party, party falls in battle. That is easy. Wow. Recommended for those who don't want to fight strategically. The difficulty is low for players to enjoy the game with ease. This is the recommended difficulty to allow the player to enjoy the distinct tension that comes from exploring the labyrinths. So, I know that this game has slightly different gameplay, at least, from the Persona games that I played. But I'm, I'm sure I can adapt. It's an RPG still. The difficulty is harsher and is recommended for players who are experienced strategists. I'm not going to say I'm not experienced, but there's a difference between being experienced and being good. You're crazy for choosing this. If the protagonist dies in battle, the game will instantly end. It's super hard, too. Well, the game is going to be so incredibly upfront about it. Let's go the neutral path and walk down the path of normalcy. Start a normal difficulty? I'm going to say yeah. Relax and enjoy the story. If it's even half as good as either of four or three story, I feel like I probably will. Characters, art, and storylines depicted in this game are purely the work of fiction. Any similarities to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. I couldn't read the rest of it, but you know what it was. Oh no! That's a terrible place for a butterfly. I'm sure that's not symbolic. Fate leads the willing, and drags along the reluctant. Lucius, Anius, Seneca. Hmm. Ooh, it's the old limo! Oh, I'm so nostalgic! Welcome to the Velvet Room. All right, this one has voice acting still! Oh, that's gonna be a godsend! I mean, it's not gonna be 100%, I'm sure, but any is good! I am happy about that! Nice to see you, Margaret! This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. It sure as all heck does! It seems you have quite a unique fate, after all. Yeah, last I checked, you're not supposed to end up in this place more than once. The cards are whispering to me. They say that a curious incident is awaiting you. Actually, snap of the fingers, I totally forgot. I kn one of the only things I know about this game is that it's technically canon... But the fact that nobody talks about it in the other game is, is suspect. I'm sure we'll see what that's all about later. But um, it takes place during, for Persona 4, the Culture Festival. And for Persona 3, when that hurricane goes through town. So we have a distinct time period for both of them. But that also, there's going to be some kind of time warp here. Because the cast of Persona 3 are older than the cast of Persona 4. But in this, they're all the same age. So... Also, that one spoiler about Persona 3 that implies this takes place in the past. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say that. I'm just gonna not to be on the safe side. Perhaps you have a premonition of it already. Do you know who your threads of destiny will intertwine with? I could hazard a guess. Margaret's words bring back memories of a certain person's words. Wow. You're strong. Eh? Could this be the fate that Margaret is talking about? If that is the case, the person's name is... Well, I'm, I'm wagering a guess here. Yeah, enter his name. Okay, so I can! 
There is a chance that his name will be seen by others through data. Oh, well, that's never going to happen, so no worries. Okay, and I should have enough letters for this one. So, it is time for the simultaneous return of Dai Gol Eiji. There we go. Is this name acceptable? As acceptable as a name could ever possibly be. I'm hype in case you can't tell. I'm really excited. <laughs> I've been wanting to play this for I so see. long. As I thought, you sense something as well. I don't know if that's the exact terminology I would use. I look forward to the story that the strands of fate will weave. I'm sure it'll be fascinating. Well then, until we meet again. Bye, Margaret. Even in a chibi form, it's still nice to see you again. Because again, I mean, the style is cute. Cool. I wonder if people got angry about this art style, or the fact that it was on the 3DS. I feel like that sounds like the type of something people would get angry about, but I don't mind it. The only problem I had with it, it was really hard to find a way to record it. Anyway, October 30th, 2011. Ten years ago. <laughs> the morning of the final day of Yasugami High's culture festival, at the Dojima home where Kai is staying. Nanako! It's good to see you again, and I'm usually never happy to see children. Nanako Dojima, Kai's younger cousin in the first grade. She does the housework after her mother died. <laughs> Oof. The table is set, and a breakfast Nanako prepared is already waiting for you. My teacher said you need to eat well in the morning. It's generally advisable, yes. I just know how to cook eggs, so I need sunny side up eggs and a rolled omelet. That's a lot of eggs! Turn black. Well, that's not good. Uh, okay, well, I'm not going to lie to you. You don't want to eat burnt food, but if there's anything salvageable in it, we can always eat that part. Mm -hmm. I heard that the burnt parts are bad for you. They can be. Depends on the circumstances and what the burnt food in question is. But Dad says he likes it like that, so I always tell him he shouldn't eat it. Yeah, well, to be fair... Your dad makes a lot of interesting decisions. Well, thanks for the food. You're the one that made it. Why are you thanking yourself? Consumption! The eggs are yummy. <laughs> Chickens are amazing. That is a legitimately true fact. I agree with you. Oh, dear God, the chickens oh, hurt us. Someone's here. Oh, God, don't open the door. Nanako, no! We've been through this. Yo. That's not a sentient large chicken. All chickens are sentient, but it's not a large chicken. That's a kanji. A kanji. Kanji Tatsume, a first year underclassman of Kai. He can be very brave, but also very impulsive. Yeah, but it's charming. Kanji. Good morning. Everyone's happy to see Kanji. Kanji came to visit this morning. Sorry to show up this early in the morning, man. The old hag wouldn't shut up about me taking this to you. I don't know what it is, but I'm happy to receive it. I thought it'd be a pain to lug all around school, so uh, I, I brought it now. Uh, you, you don't want it, huh? I'ma take it. Kanji looks a little embarrassed as he produces a large bento box. Ah, it's food. Oh, we're having breakfast right now. Let's eat it. Huh? Uh, I don't know if you'd li like it, Nanako-chan. <laughs> it's Nanako-chan. She quite literally enjoys almost everything about anything. You're good. Kanji spreads the food he brought out on the table. Ah, various things that I will not dare attempt to pronounce. Some simmered dishes and more simmered dishes. Sorry, it's all brown and stuff. But is it edible? If it is, then all is well. It's great. Your mom is a really good cook. They tend to do that sometimes. You think so? Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to hear it. You definitely helped make this, didn't you? Actually, I oh, yeah. cooked part of that. It's, uh, that... That one. Yeah, that would explain the embarrassment. You can cook? Kanji is a man of many talents. You can make knit dolls, too. <laughs> you really can do anything. Honestly, it seems that way sometimes. When I get bigger, I want to be like you, Mr. Um, Kanji. Quite frankly, I find that to be an incredibly admirable goal. Oh! That won't happen. I'll cheer you on. This, uh, no, we're going with I'm cheering you on. The world could always use more kanji tatsumes. Absolutely. <laughs> what are you cheering her on for? 
Seriously, what are you gonna do if Nanako Chan does turn out like me? Turns out like an incredibly awesome and likable person with a lot of varying talents and is just in general a really great friend to anybody who is willing. I see no downsides to this, Kanji. Nope. I hear an ominous music sting in the background and it's not the usual cat on a piano. I'm going to be doing a lot of callbacks to this Let's Play, so watch my Persona 4 and 3 Let's Plays if you're going to be annoyed by that. You hear something that sounds like the ringing of bells. Dingo the bells? Yeah, but considering all of the various things that happen at it, I don't really have a desire to relive it. It looks as though Nanako didn't hear the sound. Whoa, look at the time. I guess we'll have to use my secret passage. You got one of those? Ah, well, what you, what, what you talking about with a secret passage? There's a hole in the school fence. It's a shortcut to the classrooms that lets you avoid the teachers. Nice! Kanji! You're a delinquent! By the strictest definition, perhaps, but he is one with a heart of gold. Hey, it backfired in a positive way. Cool? Uh, not really. Ah, shut up your face. Let's go to school. I mean, senpai, come on, stop glaring at me. It's my default expression. Don't read too much into it. I c I'm not capable of anything else. Always got that steely glare. But come on, I'm gonna see the others. I wanna see the others. A little past two in the afternoon. The beauty pageant and other events have ended. Oh, thank goodness! And the culture festival is coming to a close. All right, so we're we're sidestepping past the awkwardness. Love it. I'm sure this game will have its own unique brand. Although apparently we are in here. That's an issue. Okay, the classes display. The group date cafe. Ugh. There are no customers. There never were any. And nobody... It's like nothing of value was lost. Ooh. Day of the culture festival, but there's no one here at all. There wasn't any in the first few days either. Why are you surprised? Also, hi, Yosuke. Yosuke Hanamura, Kai's classmate and a good friend. Has a habit of saying some incredibly questionable stuff, but you don't hold it against him. His father manages the Juness store. I hear all the other classes are in full swing. Holy hell, Chie, your sweater's so big. <laughs> it's adorable. Chie Satanaka, Kai's classmate and a girl who loves both kung fu and meat. That is accurate. Oh, and I was kind of interested in this group date. I wonder why it's not catching on. For literally every conceivable reason that you can fathom. Yukiko Amagi, Kai's classmate and the only child of the owner of the long-standing Amagi Inn. And a total space cadet in every conceivable way. Man, I'm glad it isn't. There's nowhere else to rest. Yay, nap time! Small talk. Great plan, Yosuke Senpai. Risei Kuchikawa, a first year student with nationwide celebrity as an idol, though she is currently on leave. She eventually goes back to it, though, and that's an entirely separate spin off that I need to play. But we're here right now, one at a time. If that was my plan, then I would have suggested a quiet zone to begin with. Well, then maybe you should have. There's one last event to finish off this festival later today, right? I wonder what it's going to be about. I heard it'll be a karaoke booth with no sign-ups needed. I've never heard karaoke pronounced as karaoke. I'm sure that it is, it's valid. Whoa, that was a voice crack. Will you <laughs> draw too large a crowd if you sang Risei-san? Is Naoto! Look at her! Look at that tiny, tiny person. Oh my god. Naoto Shiragane, a first-year student and Kai's underclassman. A brilliant detective who aids the police. Although, admittedly, I guess from this... Yeah, if I remember correctly, she was been barely part of the group at this point, but still, she still was. Yeah, because this would have been right before the uh, the hot spring incident. Right, yeah. I want in! It'll be my second grand victory after the cross-dressing pageant. Delightful! You gotta take the good with the bad, and sometimes that means endearing with Teddy. Oh dear. Teddy, a strange creature from the world inside the TV. He is currently living in Yosuke's closet. Teddy, I'm going to be 100% real with you. Can you even age? Do you want to see my magic trick? Huh? How about it? Well, if you insist... I don't think anybody in this room is even paying attention to you right now. A one, a two, and a three! It's not really much of a trick. Ta-da! My trick 
transformation into a gorgeous prince is complete. Quite frankly, that was more impressive when you had nothing inside of you. All you did was take off your costume. Yeah, it's not really much of a thing. Anybody could have hidden inside there. You could probably fit an entire mini fridge inside that thing. So, what did you think, Sensei? Were you shocked and amazed? Not even remotely. Can I be un understanding? Oh yeah, I was surprised. I am. I'm, I'm. I'm used to seeing that already. It's incredibly common. Oh my! Have you lost that love and feeling? My heart burns stronger when I get the cold shoulder, senpai. I am incredibly aware of that fact, but it's literally the only way I know how to deal with you. The ominous bells have returned. That sound. You guys hearing it, or am I a crazy person? Or a little of both. What was that just now? Rise heard it! Woo! It sounded like bells. Awesome! I'm not the only one hearing bells. I'm not having a stroke. Hmm. It was different than our usual school bell, though, huh? Can vouch for that. Oh. What is it? I heard that the Kinjiro Ninamiya statue runs around the schoolyard in the middle of the night. Well, that's just silly. Uh... Chie is not up for this. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. When? Okay, let's be real with ourselves. When has anything Yukiko ever said have anything to do with anything we're talking about? Unless the situation is extraordinarily serious, she generally just kind of is in her own universe. Besides, we don't have one of those statues here. At least not that I'm aware of. I didn't get to see everything about the school. It's a common story as one of the school's seven horrors. Does this school have its own urban legends? I mean, high school students are a superstitious and cowardly lot. Like I said, the statue runs around the... We don't have one! So how can a statue run around if said statue does not exist? Oh, but the second one's impressive too. The eyes of the Mozart bust in the music room. Glow. That's slightly more interesting. All they do is glow? I mean, it's not mind-blowing or anything, but it's... At least something that could actually happen in the building. Well, all the statue does is run. You are once again missing the point. Again, we have no statue. If a statue came up out of nowhere and started running around, then we're talking. The third one is, if you write your wish in the logbook at the nurse's office, it'll come true. I get the overwhelming sensation I should be paying attention to these. I think they're going to be real things at some point. Isn't that just a superstition? I mean, superstition, rumors, uh, tall tales, they're all basically related. Yukiko continues telling her story. Okay, but here's the main point I wanted to get to. You had one? So you did have a point. Hey! Can you guess the sixth one? Considering you never told me the fourth or fifth, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say no? But then again, even with that information, how would I know? Whoever hears the bell of the clock tower to the end, uh, we don't have a clock tower either. Sounded like we did. Although, as I recall, supposedly there was one here once. I heard it from the principal before. A very, very astute, this girl. You know, I think you're right. But I'm pretty sure that was before we were in grade school. So, what happens when you hear the bells to the end? You die. I mean, obviously. What else was it going to be? Dude, that's such a cliche. All horror stories are cliche. It's all about the presentation. You breathe your last? That's just a different wording. Rephrasing it doesn't make it better. Okay, enough about that story. Aw. That bell probably means the post-festival event starting. Let's go. Chie quickly leaves the classroom. For spooky stories, give her a big intimidate. Hmm? Chie left. You know... For her being your best friend, it's kind of strange you've yet to figure out that she's not a fan of the spooky times. Uh, I believe anyone our age still gets creeped out by the seven horror stuff. Okay, well, don't be judging. Uh, are you scared? Hmm? No, not at all. Only when it actually seems like ghosts are a power upon us. Because there was that one time in Golden, at least. In the hallways of Yasogami High, Margaret, a resident of the Velvet Room, is standing here in the bustling hall. Uh. Hello. What you doing here? Other than the fortune telling booth. I've been allowed to have a fortune telling booth here. It's just a way to pass the time. That's neat. Hey, hey, senpai, who's this beautiful lady? You never told me about her. I mean, 
I guess you could call her that. Me neither. I can't let this pass. I mean, I'm not even trying to be mean. That sounded a lot meaner than when I uh, than what I intended. You know, no, she is pretty. It's just I don't really consider her to be like a target of envy or jealousy to the present company. That's all I'm saying. Still sounds way meaner than I meant. Oh well. <laughs> I dug that grave and I'm stuck in it. You explain that she is a resident of the Velvet Room, where your persona fusions are performed. Oh, you mean that place you've mentioned before? I uh, so I have brought it up. That's always been an interesting little thing that's never elaborated on. Well, I mean, okay, in certain instances it sort of is, but it it's weird. But didn't you say the owner had a long nose? Does it does it stretch? You could always try and find out. I'd kind of like to see what happens. It doesn't stretch. And he was not referring to myself. I'd be curious to know what you've told your friends about us. The bare minimum. Oh, sorry. Um, we you... There's no need for introductions. I know about all of you. Despite appearances, the protagonist is a bit of a chatty Cathy. That aside, did you hear that sound earlier? The bells? What sound? Oh, right. I thought the post-festival thing was starting. I see. So you did hear it. Yeah. That sound did not come from reality. Oh, all right. Well, that suddenly makes it a little more ominous now, doesn't it? I heard it from my fortune-telling booth, after all. Woof. From your booth? Though it has no master, the fortune-telling room is a simplified velvet room. And I cannot stress this enough, the velvet room is basically a different plane of reality. The velvet room is inseparable from a guest's fate. Absolutely nothing meaningless happens there. So then, if a sound was heard there, it was by necessity? Look at her analyzing the situation. Adorable. Maybe you just dropped a bell or something? I mean, to be fair, that is actually a possibility. Indeed, something is happening. Or rather, something is about to begin. Maybe an entire RPG's worth of adventure. She ignored me. Yeah, she kind of liked that. Don't take it too personally. Well, I guess all we can do is check out this fortune-telling booth. This velvet room's where they've been helping you out all this time, right? Yeah. You raise an interesting point. If you all heard the sound, then it must be related to all of you. Yay! I get to include my friends! Will you please follow me? It's this way. Off she goes! Margaret began leading the way. And then we followed. So, uh, hey, Yukiko, what's the seventh story? Also the fourth and fifth. We kind of jump past those. Hundred stories. Wah! What's wrong? Oh, uh, there was a spider crawling by my feet, and huh? It's gone. It was a ghost spider, and I ain't talking about Gwen Stacy, which I only realized was the name of a superhero after I said ghost spider. A spider? Yeah, it sat down the spider. It must have been my imagination. Come on, let's go. All right. Well, that's gonna be relevant. Noted. Noted. The hallway in front of the fortune-telling booth. It's through here. Please be careful. As I feared, it is somewhat unstable. Can you be more specific about what that entails? Unstable? Time. It's unstable. Yeah, I kind of figured it would have to be. Plus the spider webs with the butterfly in it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind, of, kind of figured. Um, let's go in, senpai. Yeah, that was totally not ominous and worrying. And then again, I guess I am vouching for her, so. Sort of on me if everything goes horribly wrong. You step into the darkness within the fortune-telling booth. All of us at once? Oh, okay, it's a lot bigger! Hmm. Seems rather large for just a booth. It's bigger than the velvet room of which I'm normally accustomed. Wide open space. Wow. Also, a lot more gears. What is the meaning of this? I'm more used to limo or elevator, but and mostly a limo. Stores. Many questions, not a lot of answers. As is the use. Doors and four locks? What could these be? It's kind of interesting having Margaret not be in on it, you know? Like just knowing everything about anything. They weren't originally here? No. 
It was a small room, easily filled by a desk and a chair. Well, it ain't no more. There wasn't space for doors such as these, naturally. Could the room have changed because I brought you all here? Perhaps so. What do you mean? Stop saying weird things. She, I'm sorry to have to break this to you, but she will literally never stop doing that. Get used to it now. Can we leave? I say we get out of here for now. She hmm? heads for the exit. Oh, dang, they're louder now. The sound of the ringing bell is clearer than before. Uh-oh. We may have been summoned. By who? I'd like to investigate this for a while. If you find something, please call for me. Noted! Huh? You hear Chie from outside. We should head out too, senpai. Indeed we shall. You decide to check out what's outside. Chie seemed mildly confused. Also, was there a clock tower? I don't think that there was. All right. At first, I was trying to figure out what was wrong or weird about the situation. But, uh, yeah, I, I believe the implication is that the crowds had kind of thinned out by now. What is this place? Looks like Yasugami High School, but something doesn't feel right. Huh. Were things picking up one last time before the post-festival event? Oh, right. There was somewhere I wanted to go. Yosuke, please accompany this pitiful bear. Once the post-festival event starts, all the displays will wrap up. So go check them out now if you want to see. Fine. Where do you want to go? I'm sure it's somewhere incredibly weird. The Cosplay Cafe! Was there even one of those? Like hell. It's okay. I just need your wallet to accompany me. Yoinketh! Teddy has grabbed Yosuke's wallet and runs with lightning speed. Dude, if I'm the one paying, then I'll check out the cosplays too. Get back here! Alright. Yosuke takes off after Teddy. The cosplay cafe is the one on the third floor, right? Wasn't that where the boys are dressing up as girls? Alright, maybe. I, I'm not sure. Please, no more cross-dressing talk. Yeah, that was an event. Be more confident, Kanji-kun. You looked great. It was enough to keep me in a good mood for a while. Yeah, but so does a moderately decent pun. You didn't win the pageant, but you really livened up the show. I'm sure everyone will never forget it. <sighs> yeah, that's not helping him in any way. Wow. She poured salt right into those wounds. She threw in a couple lemons for good measure, too. Why don't we go, too? I bet Teddy's getting them riled up anyway, so maybe we better check on them. Yeah, let's go. He is a being of pure chaos. Everyone decides to follow Teddy and Yosuke. Doesn't something seem off? Yes, and man am I glad to have you around to be able to figure that sort of thing out. As someone who is currently mute, I have no means of being able to establish that with our friends. Yep, gotta, gotta have to agree with you. Mostly the clock tower. Can we notice the that? The atmosphere here seems... <sighs> it seems a little eh. Yeah, fair. In any case, let's go. We should try not to get separate. Huh? Look, outside the window. Man, she's observant. You look outside the window and you see, quotation marks, it. The clock tower or a clown? Oh, it's a clock tower. That's a clock tower. Yep, yep. There's a clock tower in the middle of the Yasugami schoolyard. What's going on here? Not a clue. Anyway, let's head to where the others went. We can investigate it later. I mean, I appreciate keeping a cool head about things, but I find that to be incredibly concerning. Unless it's made out of cardboard or a really detailed inflatable, it should not have been easy to get one over here. Let's go see where Teddy and the others are for now. I suppose do what you can, rather than focus on not doing much of anything. Oh, hello. All right, gameplay. That's a thing. Gotcha. Ha! <laughs> Only took 30 minutes. Okay. Guess we're heading to the cosplay cafe. Oh, hello. The third floor in front of the cosplay cafe. Mon Amour. 
However, the sign in front reads You in Wonderland. What gives? There's no cosplay cafe here. I mean, they could be cosplaying as Alice in Wonderland characters. Technically, Teddy did that. Huh? Was I only dreaming? Wouldn't be the first time. I remember it saying cosplay cafe in the pamphlet there. Maybe there was a last minute change. Why don't we try going inside? That seems ill advised. Huh? You're into this stuff? No, she's just inquisitive. Come on, she's a detective. I bet she'd masqueraded as others before cosplay was a thing. I mean, that's not impossible. Um, that's. Well, I'll let it pass without comment. Okay, well, that means it's an absolute yes. Noted. More importantly, Senpai. May I ask you to open this door on my queue? I will do that, but only if you tell me if you wore one of those masquerade mask thingies. But, uh, yeah, sure, no problem. I am a brave lad. I'm glad you catch on quickly. Well then, here goes. Busting out a gun! Now Dawn readies her gun that she uses to fight shadows. She also uses it to fight criminals, because last I checked, it's a legitimate actual gun with bullets in it. Whoa, why are you pulling out your weapon here? For reasons! Three, two, one, go. Oh, that's far from ordinary. Ha 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 ha! Inside the cosplay cafe. Rather where the cafe should have been. What is this place? Is this display based on a children's story? It must have been a lot of work. It's larger than a classroom, Yukiko. You search this area with your persona. Whoa, wait a sec. We're at school. I can't summon it here. Wow, you guys are not very quick. We call out for no reason. This is so awkward. Come on, come on. Uh, fine, if you insist. But don't blame me if this gets weird, okay? The pulsating cards are making me uncomfortable. Persona! It worked! I knew it. Are we inside the TV? But we never went into one, and I don't see any fog here. Hold on. I'm sensing shadows up ahead. Oof. One, two. Tons of them. Some really strong ones, too. Uh-oh. Ah, come on. If there were shadows around, there's no way I wouldn't sniff them out. Three, two, one. Hmm, hmm. See? There's tons of them? The shadows are actually here. No offense, Teddy, but I definitely take Risei's words above yours, but yeah, if <laughs> clearly pretty obvious. Whoa, there really are shadows here? Oh, what should we do? I vote we beat them up! Calm down. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, let's keep going a little. Uh, I definitely say we keep it chill, keep it level-headed. We got this. Don't worry, none. Don't lose your head now. Okay, can do. Calm down, Chie. Deep breaths. You can even hide inside your gigantic sweater if it helps. Phew. Okay. Well, we can't leave them be, so I guess we'll have to poke our noses in there. I'm down for it. I'll back you guys up from here, then. As is the norm. Huh? Then I'm staying behind, too. Acting like a bodyguard. Nice. <laughs> Are you volunteering for bodyguard duty? That's so sweet of you, Kanji. Shut up. I don't want to hear any complaints if a shadow attacks. I'm just kidding. Well then, Senpai, I'll wait out here with Kanji. Okie dokie. Sorry, but I'm going to investigate elsewhere. There's something else that's caught my attention. Okay, well, I mean, I can't do anything about it, but I would like to point out that this has made me incredibly sad. Huh? Oh, sure. I'll go with Naoto then. You guys got nothing to worry about with my partner there. My goodness, you are... So basically, the three characters staying behind are the team that I always have when I play the game. That's kind of hilarious, actually. Alright. Oh! Yeah! I'll be fine. You be careful, too. No regrets! Okay, let's meet back where we just came in from. Don't let your guard down. Is this really the Yasugami High School that you attend? Gonna wager a fine few dollars and say, nope. Or could it be... 
And all you can do for now is investigate the area. Ooh. Press the X button to open the menu screen. Here, you can use items, skills, and view your party status. Okay. Oh boy, learn the basics of moving and proceed carefully through the labyrinth. Okay, I can strafe about. Neat, neat. All right, yeah, this game is definitely playing a little bit differently. Oh, I'm like on a grid. Okay, all right, that's fine. Wow, okay, and I can strafe. I can strafe with the best of them I can. Here I come. So then, I should probably have checked. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, the, 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 the voice acting has stopped. Oh, that's right. Uh, can you hold on to this? Yo, free medicine! Margaret said we should use these if we got hurt. Well, Miss Margaret is so nice. When she wants to be. You should remember you have these if someone gets hurt. Yeah, I was just going to quickly check them check up to see. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I got a team of Chie, Teddy, and Yukiko. The game is literally making me use the characters I don't usually use. That's kind of awesome, actually. I mean, it's obviously a coincidence, but still. All right, let's see here. Oh dear, this looks like a very, very easy place to get incredibly lost in. Okay, well, we're gonna have to find a way to make it work. Oh God, it's the tongue balls, mad balls. Anybody know those? Whoa, shadows. Look who's shown up, but I know how to fight shadows. I mean, at this point in the story, literally all of us do. And it was something they're weak against. If we strike their weaknesses, fighting won't even break a sweat. We don't know what elements they're weak against, though. Well, I have access to electric ice fire. Yeah, because yeah, because Chie and Teddy both have ice. Assuming we all have the same powers as we normally do. Okay, we'll figure it out as we go along. Also, this song is baller. Nice. Let's just do this. We'll be fine. We'll figure out what their weaknesses are if we just keep attacking them with different stuff. All right, when fighting shadows, it is important to attack using elements that they are weak against. Attacking with an element that an enemy is weak against will put the attacker in a boosted state. A boosted character has two advantages. Act first in the next turn. Skill cost dropped to zero? Whoa, that's different. Weaknesses will differ depending on the enemy. Like before, it was just follow-ups. Try using different attacks on them to find their weaknesses. Okay. All right, we got attack. What'd you call me? Uh, leader skill? Allow someone to act first for the turn. Ooh. Okay, and I got lots of that and all that stuff. What do I got? I got Zeo! Seems like a pretty safe bet. Uh, should I? I don't see why not. Oh, okay, we don't have ice. We do not have ice. We've got Sleeper Punch. Uh, well, then I'd rather not, honestly. Uh, you got ice, though! And you should have... D Dia! Oh, right, yeah, you you do have... I forgot, yeah, you, you are a healer. <laughs> forgot about that part! Fair enough. Okay, so, I mean, it makes sense that we're not as strong as we would have been at this point in Persona 4, but I, I'm still kind of caught off guard by just how little we have available to us. All right, well, uh, it's got to be electric or ice, I would imagine. Oh, boy. Okay, we be Bufu. And we be getting the big licks. All the licks. All right, get, get zapped on, nerd. And we made it happen. Oh, what? Hello. Oh, wait. Does this game have the, um, the, 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 the physical weakness aspect? Like, um, like slash, you know, smack and, and like pierce and stuff? Because that'd be cool. That's like a fusion. Leave it to me to back you up. Let me know whenever you want me to check out an enemy. All right. You can see information about enemy shadows by pressing L to analyze. Good to know. Okay, cool, cool. So, now their skills, and that's Bash, and they're weak to that. So, and because I hit them with a weakness, now they lose nothing when they use their moves, is basically what I'm interpreting from this. That sounds about right, yeah? Okay, but I don't knock them over. That's important to note. So, yeah. Need to change up my stratagems a little bit. Oh, the licking, it never ceases. All right, now let's just whoop. There you go, there you go. All right, they are not dead. That's annoying. Okay, so what if I really super wanted my enemies to be the big, the the, the big time dead? Also, oh, I guess. Oh. Huh. Okay. Well, why didn't she keep her thing? Because the protagonist did. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to learn this as I go. It seems. Either way, one enemy is asleep. Don't gotta worry about them. 
Just take them down. Take them down. As we get to the big licks. Ugh. Nastiness. What's that? Aha! <laughs> On the same wavelength. All right. Still alive. Okay. Oh. Okay, so that time, no. Interesting. Interesting. It seems like sometimes you can have it be, like, consistent, and other times not so much. All right. I'll get the hang of it, I'm sure, I'm sure. No major concerns here. Yeah. Wait, huh? All right. Well, this battle has definitely been a bit trickier than normal. My goodness. All right, dial it back a little there, Reese. You don't need to over-exaggerate things here. Tongue piece. Ew, gross. I don't want no tongue remnants. Hold on, senpai. I said something that's not a shadow. Eh? It looks like someone's here. Try searching around. Okie dokie. I can do that. Uh, I don't think anybody is too injured. Huh? Wait, I think I heard something. What kind of thing did you hear? Oh god, it's a banshee! Or a siren! Or something of that general nature! Here sounds what sounds like a person crying. Yikes! What is this? Some kind of demon! Where's it coming from? I think it's nearby. We should moon it fatally! Okay. Alright. Just gonna kinda do a little sidestep crab walk. Mm, hello. Monsters? In the Maws of Madness. Oh, hello, that's Crossbow. You don't recognize those students. I think they're the ones I was picking up on earlier. Damn, he'd be dual wielding. Badass. Who are you? I could say the same. Cliche, but it works. Don't point that at other people. It's dangerous. Also, it's really cool. I'm asking who you are. Successfully introduced. You're students at Yasagami High, right? I mean, guessing by your uniforms. Students at Yasugami High. That was the impression. Are we incorrect? Yes. This cute girl goes here? Well, I want to go to school too. I'm going to start going to Yasugami High. You don't have papers. You're not technically an actual person. Yeah, yeah, be quiet. Also that. Are you two okay? Do you mean those monsters? They did attack, but I drove them away. With my crossbows. You did? But weren't you crying earlier? What's wrong? Well, I doubt it was him that was doing it. I, I was scared. Fair enough. Those things are pretty creepy. I, I was scared, but Zen kept saying that we need to go in. Well, that's just diabolical. Why'd you put her through that? Were you about to go further inside? That was the intention. But... but there's still a long, long way to go from here. My bear nose works a bit too, you know. So it's gonna take a while, huh? Then shouldn't we go back? I wanna check in with Yosuke and everyone. Probably a good idea. Go, go back? I want to go too. I wanna go back. That seems advisable. Very well. We will come with you. Huh? All oh, right. Of course. <laughs> I completely forgot about that part. I am Zen, and she is Ray. That's what we call each other. Is that what you call each other, or is that your names? There's a difference. Zen Kun and Ray Chan, right? Don't worry. We won't leave you here. <sighs> Thank you. Worry not, stranger people. Oh, you actually want me to... Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we were going to do so automatically. Oh, hello. Once you're familiar with moving around, try the advanced controls, like running around. Neat, neat. Okay. Oh, yep. Uh oh. All right. More monsters, it seems. Three shadows, and I'm missing data. I'm jealous. Imagine how much it can eat. Okay, you know what? That's not something I had previously considered about the creatures. Sorry, I was kind of blown back by the fact that I seem to have a party of five right now. Hello? 
Okay. I'm all I'm all good with that. I'm all good with that. Uh, let's see here. Maybe some Bufu styles would would be pretty good about there. Uh, let's also heal up Chi. What do you guys can? What can, what can you do? Bane slice, cut attacks. Oh yeah, so no, yeah, all the different types are straight up here. Okay. Whoa. Using that ice styles. Not a fan. Okay, that's a weak. Ouch. Oh, we can get knocked down, but not you. Rude. Wow, that dude hits hard. No, dude. Okay. All right. Yukiko has definitely been knocked on her butt. Not great. Not great. Yo! All right. We were. That's what we were hoping for. Oh. Yeah, sure. Why the hell not? Without Yukiko, because she's stuck on her butt. Nice! Free damage! Yep, it's weak to a lot of things that we're about to smack it upside the head for. Uh, probably gonna die before she gets a chance, but on that off chance that we all miss or it doesn't die in time, always better to be careful! Not bad, not bad, not bad. Give me the XP's! I noticed, yeah, I guess Risei's leveling up too. She did in the other one too. I just, it's still weird. What does leveling up get you? Seems the shadows you defeated dropped something. Shadow piece! Senpai, your energy is getting low. Be careful. Well, the exit should be like right over yonder. So like, we shouldn't be getting into any problems. Should you leave the labyrinth? I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, we should. In front of you is you in Wonderland. You can now to have returned from investigating other areas of the school. Welcome back. H Hello. Howdy. Um, Rei-chan and Zenkun, right? Oh wait, or is it Rei-san and Zen-san? Uh, how old are you guys? I mean, like, what year are you in? What year are you in? Huh? I'm a first year. A first year. Though that's a very hastily put together backstory. And we're the same age. Allegedly. What were you two doing in there? Crimes. I thought we needed to get out of here. We were looking for a place to leave from. Leave? If you want to leave, use the school gate. Do you, like, uh, have no sense of direction? Okay, well, I'm feeling a little called out. There is no exit. Uh-oh. Huh? There is no exit. Well, at least he's a cr <laughs> He is concise and he's to the point. I appreciate it. So. Ah! So you guys have discovered things. Wait, what? Aside from, you know, the clock tower. There's a school gate, but we can't get out that way. The secret passage that Kanji Kun usually uses didn't exist at all. Apparently it's a bit of an open secret. Hey, how do you know about the hole in the fence? I mean I used it just this morning. There's no way it ain't there. It's not there. We can't leave this school. And then there's that clock tower. You mean the one in the seven horrors? I mean, it's not necessarily the same one, but it's not impossible. It would be faster to show it to you. Please, follow me. Will do! And then we did- ooh! That's a big old thing, ain't it? There appears to be a clock tower standing in the center of the yard. It's for real! There actually is a clock tower here! Neat! I mean, in an ominous sort of way. It was demolished before Yukiko Senpai and the others began elementary school, correct? I don't know, that's just all I've been given to go off of. I don't know exactly when, but I think it was around that time. But I thought it was more like a small monument than an actual full-size tower. At least, I don't think it was so big that a person could go inside. Size aside, looks like we can't go inside this one either. Mm. Huh? Even though it's this big? Yes. There's no door. Alas, if only we could enter. I thought we'd find some sort of clue. Okay, bear with me, but if we all work together to create an ultimate human ladder, one of us might be able to get up to the bell part. I see. Maybe. Hey, Zenkun, Raychan, do you know anything about this clock tower? I mean, it's mysterious. You're mysterious. Could be a connection. Um, it's been here all this time. Is the clock stopped? It is moving, but it's extremely slow. Ominous. Slow? Neither Ray nor I know anything about this building, but 
That bell did ring. So the bell we heard must have been this clock tower's bell. Safe bet. The bell rang, and I entered that labyrinth with Ray. That's where we met you. Hmm. You went in after hearing the bell? May I ask why? I felt that that's what needed to be done. Ah, another worldly compulsion. Fair enough. <clears throat> or secrets. I see. I mean, you could be lying. I have no idea. Seems this isn't Yasugami High. It also seems we're slow on the uptake. This place is very similar to Yasugami High, but it is somewhere completely different. Hey, why don't we go see Margaret? She does tend to know things. Maybe she's figured something out about this place. Man, that'd be nice. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. And then we went to go see her. Any infotainment up in here? Margaret is standing here with a very serious expression, which is unlike her, apparently. Ugh, what a mess you've dragged me into. It wasn't our fault. Wait, we dragged you into this? You're the one with the crazy space-time powers, lady. Um, what is this place? It seems this is a haven in the rift. A place that exists between dream and reality. It connects to the world of the collective unconsciousness. Spooky! It must be similar to the TV world you are all familiar with. Yeah, that stands to reason. So that's why there are shadows here and we could summon our personas. But why are we in such a place? I don't know. Why is anything anything in this universe? I don't know the reason. But do you remember what I said before? Vaguely. Nothing meaningless happens here. Okay, that party. If you were more specific, I could have given you a better answer. Reality and this haven in the rift connected via the velvet room. And you all descended here. It happened by necessity. Indeed, one could call it fate. Those people would be called silly, but they wouldn't be inaccurate. Fate. There is something that you must do here. That is all I know. Ah, very specific. Thank you. All right. Um, any vague idea what? I do not know what it is, but unless you accomplish it, there will be no way back to reality. Delightful. In other words, Oop, there goes gravity. You won't be able to leave here. <gasps> For real? Okay, that's a that's a game in the future. Ga, wrong, wrong, wrong person saying that phrase. Is that why the students are acting so weird? All they say is Yasugami High's culture festival is fun and. Let's go to the carnival shooting gallery. Oh my god, they've turned into full-blown NPCs. And that's what they already were, but the joke still works. It's like the answers they give me don't match my questions. I can buy what they're selling now. Neat! Also, I don't see anyone else I know here. I mean, not that I know every single student's face, but there's no way I wouldn't recognize even one person. Mm. All they do is speak words. You cannot communicate with them. Ha! <laughs> oh man, that is... That, that, that is a wealth of opportunity for jokes. I... Just, my cup spilleth over. Huh? The students here aren't human. There's something like phantoms. Shadows will not attack them. Good for them! As far as I know, those monsters you call shadows have never come out from that labyrinth. I do not know why. But it's always been so. Huh. Always? How long have you two been here? Hmm, a, a pretty long while? I mean, with time slowed down, I suppose you don't actually know. What about before coming here? We were here when we gained consciousness. We don't remember anything before that. Oh, yeah, okay, that's that's mysterious. Our memories were taken. Ah. T taken? Wait, by who? I don't know. They probably had that memory taken, too. It's the perfect crime! But you remember having them taken? But I remember having them taken. Okay, well, that sounds more like you're just repeating stuff, but all right. But how would someone take another person's memories? Yukiko, I'm going to be 100% real with you. Almost nothing that we're physically capable of in this universe makes any actual logical sense in science. I'm pretty sure there's probably some kind of crazy power out there that can yoink memories away. You can shoot fireballs out of a fan. A paper fan. I don't know. Uh, could our memories get taken too? I don't know, probably. I don't know. Considering, apparently, 
Nobody remembers this adventure taking place. I'd wager possibly. Seems pretty serious. More than a little. Yeah. Uh... It's an adventure inside of our already previously established adventure. Wait, for real? Does this mean there's a bad guy here? Hey, he reached the top floor. Good job, buddy. The penny drops. <laughs> In any case, let's look for a way to leave here. Haven't we already established that we can't? Clues must be in that labyrinth. It's obviously different from everywhere else here. It's probably where a lot of answers can be found if we dig deep enough. Leave? Uh, I want to leave too. I want to go back with everyone. Ray? Zen, let's leave together, okay? I want to go back too. Alright, if that is what you wish. Looking forward to figuring out what the deal with these two is. I have a favor to request. If you are going to enter this labyrinth, I ask that you take us with you. Okay, sure. We won't be any trouble. I will protect Ray, and I can fight the monsters in this labyrinth. I mean, I can't promise that I'll be able to, you know, fully utilize you. Uh, I have reason to believe I'm going to have way too many party members. So, I mean, I'll try. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't mind. Help is good. Well then, let us do this. You're the type of guy that doesn't use contractions in their words. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, I'm feeling hungry. Same. Where did you get that? Oh, hot, hot. How did you do that? Oh, oh. Oh, takoyaki? Where'd you pull that out from? The food dimension. I know something. Happiness comes in the shape of takoyaki. No. No, it definitely does not. Wow. She's a Yosuke level disappointment. Okay, well, first of all, I don't even know what that's supposed to mean, other than the fact that it's apparently insulting. Second of all, in what regard? Are you, like, what are you, what are you, what are you calling her? Did you just insult Ray? Yo, yeah, he did. I, I would never. I just meant that her distinctive looks and personality are, are amazing. No, 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 Zen, that's dangerous. Yeah, but it would be funny. <laughs> To get along well. I promised that we stay together. Where did you get a corn dog? I promised to get all cozy together in my costume too. Y'all definitely gonna get shot. With Miss Margaret, of course. Yeah, you go ahead and attempt that. It ain't happening, y'all. Then I will fulfill my duty as well. As guests of the Velvet Room, I'll assist you as much as I am able. Nice. If you are to fight against shadows, you will need to make the necessary preparations. Hmm. Where to start? She totally ignored me. Yeah, that's the only way to really get things done around here. We're to fight shadows, and I worry about our equipment. Yeah, in RPGs, we need a progressive, you know, uh, upgrading system. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to hit hard enough. To proceed safely, we'll want armor to protect ourselves, and weapons to attack the shadows. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to make that happen. Useful tools would be also helpful. And ideally, we'd have some place to replenish our stamina. Yeah, I don't like the idea of having to go without supplies. Would this be insufficient? Your crossbow? It's a projectile device that uses nearby objects. Its effect changes depending on what it fires. It, I, I guess it depends on your definition. Why don't you all use one too? I wouldn't feel confident using that. I'd probably shoot Yosuke before I got used to it. Wow, that's two insults towards Yosuke. Is he gonna chime in at all? I can so see that happening. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess everyone's just being honest. Seriously though, we all use completely different weapons. Never mind unfamiliar, it'd be dangerous. I see. Different weapons for each of you. Yeah. So, it would help if you had weapons? I mean, we somehow already do. We had a, a little bit of a fight going for us already. Although, granted, at, at any given moment in time, I feel like Naoto and Chi are the only ones that could actually, t you know, tango with just about anybody. Like, uh, well, yeah, they could help us find a way out of this place, yo. Then we definitely need some. No, oh, so that wasn't your way of saying you knew where to get them. Um, there's a place with all kinds of stuff flying around. I think they have some. Let's go look together. Okay. And we can swing by the donut shop on our way. I don't think that there is one. She a hungry gal. The art room. 
This is supposed to be a hands-on class on making small toys here. But something doesn't feel right. Might be the statue with the, uh, the, you know, the, the weapon stabbed into them. Handcrafted workshop. Was it always like this? Somehow I doubt it. That is not what those are. Full of straw. Sound very unappetizing. I see. Hey, I bet this is your kind of place, huh, Kanji? Probably. Uh, well, kinda. Yeah, I think we can use the weapons here. They all seem pretty sturdy and... Huh? What the... These are all toys! Well, that is the descriptive, you know, that I was given for the room. to imbue them with enough power to fight shadows. I mean, we gotta find some way to make this work. Well, who could possibly go and do that? Is it you and your crazy arcane magics? Hmm? Who else but me? I don't know. We don't know everything about Yukiko. You should find them from time to time upon defeating shadows in the labyrinth. When you find these, please bring them to me. Okay. I will use those materials to make weapons, armor, and sundries. I do enjoy a good sundry. Materials? Allow me to give it a try. Please wait a moment. Probably like those tongue pieces I picked up. Ah, the shadow piece. I guess that would explain why they made such note of it. I did not know you were a smithy. What do you think? I believe it came out quite well. Longsword! And to go home! Nice. As you have seen, I will create your equipment and sundries. Wow, you're kind of working overtime. But I expect to be compensated for my efforts. That is how contracts work, after all. Nothing comes free. Do you have any earthly use for money? What? How stingy. I mean, I guess it's supposed, you know, for the sake of making the game not incredibly easy, but still. Also, taking all your belongings into the labyrinth will surely be troublesome. If there are things you do not expect to need inside, you can leave them with me. Ah, an item bank. You're gonna charge us for that too, aren't you? Probably. For this lady's sake, I'll look after your belongings free of charge. A miracle! What is that thing in the far back? I can't... It's like shooting something up. I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, is that like a forge? I can't tell. Okay, though, neat. Store items, buy stuff. You also desired some place to recover your stamina, yes? Yes, indeedy. I happen to know a perfect facility for that nearby. Will you all follow me? Not like we have a lot of options, sure. The nurse's office. Phew. I'm relieved to see it's just a normal nurse's office. Are there any nurses here? Hello? Three, two, one... Don't be sad, Yosuke. Called it! I didn't say anything! I will make arrangements for you to replenish your stamina here. Remember to come here whenever you return from the labyrinth. Noted! You're capable of a lot. As with your equipment, I will obviously require compensation for use of this facility. I almost feel like uh, money management is going to become a bit of an issue for me. Though my prices will be reasonable, my intent is not to make you suffer. I mean, I would kind of hope so. If we can't get back to full health, we won't have any way to get you money. However, what might constitute a fair price is beyond my ken. Delightful. You'll be fine as long as it doesn't exceed one million yen. No? I don't know. How much money are we expected to make in this place? I wish you had even the sense of your average housewife. Anyway... You can now make all the preparations you should need. Nice! If you have trouble, try adjusting your equipment and healing. That may give you the advantage you need. Deciding who will take part in the battles is also key. Don't neglect your formation. I had no plan to not do that. Well then, I bid you good luck. Thanks, Margaret. She's weird, but nice. Hey, Senpai, maybe you should look over the formation like Margaret suggested. Okay! Now that the whole gang's together, you need to decide on who's actually gonna help out in fights. So I can bring four of you with me now instead of just three. I guess considering how many characters there are probably going to end up being, because eventually at some point the Persona 3 cast gets involved in this. So I guess it would make sense to give me a little bit more to work with. Alright, sure. I'll do that. 
Let me tell you what you need to watch out for when setting up your formation. Okay. There's a front row and a back row. People in back will be hurt less by enemy attacks. Oh. But if you put someone who uses a close range weapon back there, they won't be as effective. Oh. So long and short range is also a factor. Okay. Oh, good point. It'll be hard to kick stuff from back there. The Sakunaka style works best from the front. So don't put Chie in the back. Gotcha. Naruto-kun, Zen-kun, and I will have no problems attacking from the back with our weapons, though. Yeah, can I briefly talk about how weird it is that you can chuck your fan at people and just kind of go get it back? The key appears to be setting up a formation that works with each of our weapons. Okay. Should we have an offensive mix, lean on defense, or feel the balanced team? Well, we can adjust as needed. I'm going to be honest with you, Naruto. I'm going to pick the characters that I like the most, and whether or not it's a good idea or not is kind of besides the point. I will brute force it towards victory. Yeah, that's a lot to digest all at once. Oh, <laughs> I'm fine leaving it all up to him. Yeah, of course you are. You can change who's in the front and back rows during battle, too. Convenient. All right, so I can, like, dip someone back there if I don't want them getting knocked out as fast. Try mixing it up, depending on the situation. Can do. I ain't got no problem with that. All righty. Woo! You are now able to change party members. Try changing the party right freaking now. Ooh, okay. All right. Oh, wait. Can I have... Wait, I can have... No, surely not. Anyway, I, I, let, let's find out. Anyway, uh, second year, Diasu got me high, son of the junior store manager. Learns wind skills, has great speed, but is disappointingly unlucky. Best in the front row, weapons, knives, cut. Kicks back, okay, yeah, yeah. Second year, and Diasu got me high, girl who loves kung fu and meat. Learns physical skills, expect powerful attacks, but her low SP hinders her utility. Best in the front row. All right, Prim, with an odd sense of humor, learns fire and healing spells. Her elemental attacks are powerful, but watch out for her low HP. Best suited for the back row. Fan, cut. Okay, so cut, cut, bish, bash. Uh, an impulsive but faithful young man. Learns electric and support skills. His attacks are powerful, but his lack of speed is a problem. Best used in the front row. Gotta bring in the kanji, obviously. A first year at Yasukami High, Detective Prince, who helps police. Learns light and dark skills. She's well-trained, but won't learn skills to make her shine. Odd thing to say. Best used in the back row. Gun is stab. I guess bullets are technically stabbings. All right, well, that's an obvious take him. Uh, learns ice and healing skills. Versatile and useful. He is adorable, but somewhat slow. Mm, I see. I see. Uh, best on the front line. I see. Uh, well, in the event of what I am currently experiencing, I mean, I guess... And... Okay, no, so only five. Only five. I mean, I kind of need a healer, so that's just kind of how we're rolling with it. I got some frontline fighters. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, this should be okay. Not for not for nothing there, Chie. I'd like to have this, everybody, but obviously that would make things a little easy. Hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, learns multiple elemental attacks. They're high basic stats and attacks for variety make them very useful. Best use in the back row. I'm probably going to have to use myself some stratagems. My, my, my goodness. Okay, all right. You can now use the nurse's office. Healing there will allow you to uh, not be all that, you know, injured and stuff. Okay, okay. I will, most assuredly, take care of all of that business. Of that, I assure. But at this exact moment in time, I'd like to take myself a little bit of a break. It looks like we're actually going to be making legitimate gameplay progress moving on forward, so it seems like a good time to lay low for a bit. In the next part, I guess we're going to see what exactly our ultimate objective here is. I'm super excited and hyped to be playing this, and I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you all then.